After week five of the 2021 season, Michigan climbed into the top 10 with a win over Wisconsin. The Badgers have been a tough nut to crack for the Wolverines in recent years, and a lot of the credit for that goes to fifth-year Badger defensive coordinator Jim Leonard. His defense is frequently ranked in the top five nationally, and in three of the four previous matchups between these two teams, Michigan scored 14 or fewer points. This year, though, the Wolverines were able to break through, scoring 38 points on the way to a four-touchdown victory, and in this video, we'll see how they did it under the direction of offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis. The first thing to point out about Michigan's game plan here is that they were doggedly committed to running the ball, and they stuck with it even when they weren't that good at it. Throughout the game, the Wolverines ran the ball 44 times, in spite of the fact that they were averaging just 2.5 yards per carry. So one big question here is, what were they trying to do, and why was it so hard to do it? The reasons here are partially schematic and partially personnel-based. Let's start by looking at what Michigan wanted to do. In this game, they played a lot of two tight end sets, and they loved to use the versatility of that position to create a variety of looks for the defense to deal with. Here, for example, it looks like the Wolverines are trying to spread the Badgers out with just one of their tight ends lined up in tight to the core of the formation, while the others split out wide like a big receiver, and they definitely could play this way. To counter this kind of spread passing attack, though, they'd also often take their second tight end and either line him up in the box as an extra blocker or motion him in for the same purpose as we're seeing right here. Although the Wolverines tried to play versatile in this personnel grouping, Wisconsin clearly saw the run game as the bigger threat here, and so they opted to live in their base 3-4 defense against these sets. So here, we see two stand-up outside linebackers on the edges. We see three big interior linemen pinched inside the offensive tackles. And we see two inside linebackers stacked behind them all at the second level. Behind this front, the Badgers then played a lot of single high coverages, so they're usually going to have one safety playing somewhere in the deep middle of the field, while their second safety rotates down to give them an extra run defender in the box. This is the basic setup that the Badgers used to combat Michigan's run-heavy two tight end sets, and for the most part, they were very successful, with their personnel controlling a lot of the game against Michigan's run blockers. On this play, we'll see what that looked like. This play is a fourth and one, and Michigan's trying to run zone to the right. If we think of this just in terms of getting everybody blocked, as everybody works to the right, these three playside blockers are going to take on these three playside defenders. Then, in the middle of the formation, the center and left guard are going to combo block from the nose tackle up to the linebacker that's stacked directly behind him. Finally, all the way on the backside, this tight end is going to kick out the outside linebacker that's lined up outside of him. So far, that all makes sense, but when we think about the fact that all of those linemen and tight ends are occupied with their defenders in this way, we can see the weak spot in Michigan's blocking scheme. There are really two problems. First, the left tackle is just straight up outnumbered because he's got a defensive end shaded just to the inside of him, and he's got a safety lined up in his outside gap. So no matter what he does, he cannot block both of those guys. This is just a consequence of that single high coverage structure from Wisconsin that I talked about earlier. The second problem is simply the alignment of this defensive end pinched inside the left tackle. Remember that this play is working to the right, and so when the defensive end lines up in this inside shade, it gives him a more direct path into the gap to the tackle's right, and this will make it tough for that guy to cut him off. After the snap, the left tackle does indeed fail to stop that guy, and so the defensive end's able to shoot into the backfield for a tackle for loss. In spite of the fact that that defensive end has good leverage, though, you really would like your left tackle to put up more resistance than that, so this play fails due to a combination of both scheme and personnel. Throughout this game, Michigan's offense never really got the ground game untracked, so there aren't any big runs to balance out these negative plays. But in my opinion, some of the best stuff that they did schematically was in finding ways to eke out the yards that they did get, and we'll see a good example of that right here. On this play, Michigan's running to the left, and so this guy right here is going to be playing that backside defensive end role that they had trouble blocking on the last play. This time they've got a plan to attack this alignment though, and they're doing it by running a tight bunch set here on the backside, with two tight ends and a wide receiver all lined up in tight. So what does this do? First of all, the two tight ends here create a lot of width on the edge and open up a good amount of space between that defensive end and the linebacker outside of him. There are a few things that the defense could potentially do against this kind of alignment, but Wisconsin wanted to use that outside linebacker to set a hard edge in this game. And so when Michigan puts two tight ends out there, that outside linebacker is going to line up outside of both of them to avoid getting pinned down inside and giving up the edge. After the snap, as the offensive line works to the left, this alignment opens up a wide lane between the defensive end and the outside linebacker, and the running back ends up cutting back right into that lane for the first down. The other thing that this formation does is it takes that offensive tackle out of isolation, because with two tight ends to this side, you can use one to kick out that widened outside linebacker, and still have another left to work a combo block with the right tackle against that defensive end. After the snap, this wing tight end right here is going to step left with the offensive line, and he's looking to chip that defensive end before working up to the inside linebacker behind him. So that all explains the value of these two tight ends, but what about this wide receiver here? 
Well, remember that Wisconsin's been quick to bring a safety down into the box as an extra run defender. And so when that wide receiver lines up in tight to the core of the formation, he's going to be able to fold up through that lane that's been created, working as a lead blocker for the running back and getting up to that safety. Of course, when you bring that wide receiver into the box, the cornerback comes right along with him. And so given what Wisconsin wanted to do in this game, there's always going to be someone that you can't block. But the point is that on this play, the running back doesn't meet that unblocked guy until he's already picked up the first down. And this is obviously a big improvement over the last play. Here, we'll see another way to take care of that defensive end, this time highlighting the versatility that Michigan likes to get from the tight end position. The Wolverines are again attacking to the left here, and so again, this guy will be that problematic backside defensive end that we've been talking about. Now remember, part of the problem here is the leverage that that guy gets from his alignment. He's shaded inside of the offensive tackle, and this makes it hard for that offensive tackle to block him one-on-one on a play to the left. On this play, the Wolverines are just going to change up that matchup, so the offensive tackle won't be responsible for that defensive end at all. After the snap, he's going to leave that guy unblocked and will instead fire out to block the backside outside linebacker. Obviously, leaving that defensive end unblocked isn't an option, so how's Michigan going to get a blocker that does have good leverage on him? The answer is going to come from this tight end. At first, he's split out wide to the left of the formation, and it looks like he could be a legitimate receiving threat here. Just before the snap, though, the Wolverines are going to motion him inside, and then after the snap, he's going to continue across the formation where he picks up a trap block on that defensive end. Remember that this play is working to the left, and so when the tight end works back across the grain like this, it gives him great leverage to cut off that defender from the play, letting the running back get out to the play side for a nice gain. As I've said, Michigan's run game never really got going against Wisconsin. Their longest run was 8 yards, and as we've seen, it took a lot of schematic magic just to get that far. And so while they were committed to the run game and kept chipping away with it, it was really the passing game that opened things up for them. Let's start with a look at this very nicely schemed touchdown. This play's a flea flicker, and fans' first reaction to this will always be about the backfield fake, but there's a lot more to say about the strategy, and it all starts with the motion by this wide receiver right here. To understand why, let's go back to that bad run play that we started the video with. If you'll remember, on this play, we saw that the left tackle was outnumbered 2 on 1, with the defensive end shaded just inside of him, and the safety rolled down into his outside gap. Now, Michigan can't be totally surprised by this, right? They've watched tape, and they know that at least one safety is going to be rolled down in a short yardage situation like this. So on this play, they are trying to combat this by bringing a wide receiver in motion across the field. Obviously, Wisconsin has to react to that guy crossing the formation somehow, and there are a couple of things that they could potentially do to react. First, they could run the cornerback across with him. This would give him a defender for that motion receiver, and it wouldn't require any changes in their front structure, so that at first looks like a nice solution. Here's the problem, though. To that side that the cornerback could be vacating, Michigan still has a tight end, and so if you get rid of that cornerback, then you're committed to defending that tight end with one of your linebackers down the field. I don't know Wisconsin's linebacker personnel and coverage that well, but this is something that could potentially discourage you from running that cornerback across in response to this motion. The next possibility is that you could leave the cornerback to that side of the field, and then when the wide receiver crosses the formation in motion, you could bump out your safety to cover him. While this leaves you in good shape coverage-wise, it does alter your front structure. If the safety stays in the box, then he and the defensive end can outnumber the left tackle, as we've seen. But if you bump the safety out of the box with motion, then you lose that advantage and potentially open yourself up to a cutback. My guess is that this is what Michigan was expecting Wisconsin to do, and so that's why they ran the play the way that they did. Instead of all this, Wisconsin went with a third option. Remember that the Badgers were predominantly a single high coverage team in this game. Well, when they got motion like this, they rolled that single high safety down to pick it up. When you use that safety to pick up the motion receiver, you're able to leave the other safety in the box to defend the run, and you're able to leave your cornerback on the backside. So this responds to everything that Michigan's trying to do here. Now let's come back to the flea flicker. Before the snap, we're going to see this wide receiver start to run across in motion. So what's going to happen? Of course, that single high safety is going to rock down to pick him up like we just saw. To attack this, Michigan's then just bringing their slot receiver over here on kind of a cross and go route. He's going to start out like he's running an intermediate crosser, and then he's going to bang it downfield toward the back corner of the end zone, running right behind this cornerback who is impacted by the flea flicker action. This is beautifully designed scheme, and it sets up the Wolverines for a big passing touchdown. Most of the passing game, though, was really just about Michigan's wide receivers being a lot better than Wisconsin's DBs. 
on this play, we're going to watch the number three receiver in trips down here at the bottom of the screen. Notice that his defensive back is lined up well outside of him. He wants to take away any outside routes and force that receiver to go inside to that single high safety in the middle of the field. So what actually happens? After the snap, that receiver takes a hard outside release and the defensive back immediately loses his outside leverage, giving up the touchdown to the sidelines. There's a little bit more that you could say about the scheme and the passing concept here, but really this is just a wide receiver beating his man. We'll see something similar here with a little double move by this wide receiver to the left of the screen. That guy's got a cornerback playing over the top of him, and that defender is giving up a pretty substantial cushion because he knows that he's got an outside linebacker who's going to be dropping out to pick up any underneath route. The one thing that that cornerback should not do then is get beat deep. So what ends up happening? That wide receiver hits him with a double move, he bites on it a little bit, and the receiver runs right by him for a long reception. And here we'll see another touchdown. This one's going to go to the wide receiver up here at the top of the screen, and this time Wisconsin's pressing that guy and playing quarters, so there could potentially be some kind of safety help over the top, at least against certain routes. On this play, though, Michigan's going to get rid of that safety by attacking him with a tight end, who's running an intermediate crossing route to pull him down to the inside. When the tight end takes that safety out of the picture, that's going to isolate the wide receiver up at the top of the screen one-on-one -on -one versus a press cornerback. After the snap, he runs right past him without any real jam, and the quarterback puts it up for an easy touchdown. So while Wisconsin's front was a lot better than Michigan's run blockers, Michigan's wide receivers were a lot better than Wisconsin's secondary, and these big passing plays were really the thing that made the difference in this game. All right, that's it for this video. Keep checking back on the channel for more breakdowns throughout the season, and I'll see you here next time.